At the moment, there is tremendous interest in the idea that molecules could store individual pieces of data, and this could be used in ultra-high density data storage or quantum computing. Historically, these systems uh, at their very best have operated around about 13 to 14 Kelvin. This is really cold. This is not a temperature that is useful in a sort of industrial application. Uh, but what my colleagues have done is develop a system that operates at 60 Kelvin and this is now getting quite close to the boiling point of liquid nitrogen and that's the point at which systems like this might become uh, commercially exploitable in quantum computing or data storage. We're making more and more data every single year and internet search engines, for example, have huge data centres which are becoming bigger and bigger and the energy consumption of these are absolutely massive. In 2014, I designed a really interesting molecule where there was a, a lanthanide, so way at the bottom of the periodic table, with just two ligands on it. And this had never been made before. And we did this more as a folly because we were interested in the interest in reactivity that this complex would have. And then we talked to our colleagues at Manchester, Richard Winpenny and Nick Chilton, and they said this would be very good if you could change that lanthanide for one that was more magnetically interesting, um, but keep the same geometry, and you could make a fantastic magnet. It's been a journey of a few years. I had to develop strategies to try and make uh, one of these elements that likes to have loads of things around it have just two things, which is quite difficult. No one had done that before. I worked out a way to make a compound which looks a little bit like this. So where we've got these two five-membered rings around it, and this is called cyclopentadiene. This central atom here is dysprosium, which is a, a lanthanide, and then these two five-membered rings are all made of carbon. And then this whole thing has a positive charge, which we had to stabilize with a, a counter ion that wouldn't then stick to it. And that's been a problem in the field for some time now, where people have decided to make compounds that look like this with a third thing stuck to them, whereas we found out a way of removing that, sequestering the charge, away from the metal centre and that is the key difference between something that is a terrible magnet and a fantastic magnet. What I did was I made a compound where there was dysprosium in the middle with two of these five-membered rings on it and then a chloride atom also attached and that sort of compound has been known for a very long time and what we did was we used a cationic reagent which was able to rip that chloride off by making a stronger bond with a different element and then we were left behind with this metal sensor with just two rings on it and then the charge was balanced by a large anion so that's something with a negative charge but it was highly delocalized so spread out around this anion which meant that it wouldn't then stick to our metal sensor. I realized that we could make this compound quite easily with two rings and a chloride but then I applied this method that no one had used before to remove this, this chloride. What we would need to do next is to get these molecules onto a solid surface and then this would perhaps resemble more the hard drive technology that you're used to seeing, but we'd have to use liquid nitrogen temperatures to store it at because the coolant is, is required to make these devices hold the magnetization. The compound itself can be made at room temperature, in fact there's some right here, however it isn't actually an interesting magnet at room temperature. So what happens at low temperature is you stabilise a certain ordering of the electrons in it and that means that it is actually a single molecule magnet. But then above that, molecular vibrations mean that it stops being magnetic. So this is a normal paramagnet, which means it just has unpaired electrons which then can interact with an external magnetic field. However, below 60 Kelvin, it actually retains any external magnetism that we could apply to it. So if you apply a field, say, up, which could represent a 1 or a 0 in a computer, below 60 Kelvin, this thing remains up. And that's sort of the crux of using single molecule magnets for information storage, is that it has to retain information in the absence of an externally applied field. And that's what we can do above 60 Kelvin. It came as a complete surprise. So the experiment I ran initially was look at the magnetic memory up to 20 Kelvin because nothing's ever better than 14, nothing's ever been seen better. So I was gobsmacked. We had a world first. We'd seen something that no one else had seen before. We found that it was the two specific vibrations on each side of this molecule uh, was part of the reason uh, for these interesting properties. And so now we have a way to develop the next analog. So can we modify these positions and, and change the properties? 
Liquid nitrogen is plentiful. The atmosphere is 80% nitrogen, so we can liquefy this easily. And single molecule magnets operating at this temperature would be able to be used in a commercially viable device. The whole world has been trying to make this molecule within our research field for a long time because they knew that it would be the best single molecule magnet made to date.